Hi, my name is Rodney Kite Powell, and I'm the director of the Touch the Map Library here at the Tampa Bay History Center. And this is another episode of From the Collection Map Edition. We've been posting maps from our collection on our social media channels for a few years now. One of the most popular maps with our followers is this one, an early 1940s map of Tampa's streetcar system. The map was printed by the Tampa Electric Company, who operated the streetcar system that appears on this map. Unlike today, with Tico partnering with Heartline to operate the present streetcar system, Tico operated the entire system on their own from their founding in 1899 until 1946. Tampa streetcar system actually predates Tampa Electric. The first streetcars were open-sided passenger cars pulled by wood-burning dummy or miniature engines. That first line connected Tampa, or what is now downtown Tampa, to the newly created Ybor City in 1886. The company had to expand their ability to produce electrical power to accommodate their new customers and expanded streetcar routes. To accomplish that, the company constructed a hydroelectric dam on the Hillsborough River near today's 22nd Street. Today, that's in the Rowlett Park neighborhood, near the historic Rogers Park Golf Course. But in 1897, when the dam was completed, it was way out in the country, and the area is primarily used for cattle grazing land. The dam flooded that land, angering cattle ranchers. They delivered a note to the consumer's office demanding that the dam be either removed or disabled. The company refused to do so. So the ranchers took matters into their own hands and blew up the dam with dynamite. There was an investigation, but no arrests were ever made. Consumers went into bankruptcy and a new company, Tampa Electric Company, was formed and purchased consumers' assets. Tampa Electric expanded the streetcar system, which eventually reached most of Tampa's neighborhoods. Looking at the map again, you can see that the streetcar went as far north as Sulphur Springs, as far east as Gary, as far south as Ballast Point and Port Tampa City, which actually aren't even on this map, and as far west as West Tampa. While it did not crisscross every neighborhood, most citizens of Tampa were within a reasonable walking distance to a streetcar stop, at least reasonable uh, given the early 20th century standards. Though streetcars went to and through almost every major neighborhood in Tampa, the people of those neighborhoods did not receive equal service. Some African-American neighborhoods did not have the same coverage as white or Latin neighborhoods, and all African-Americans and Afro-Cuban riders were forced to use segregated waiting areas and had to sit in the back of the streetcar at all times. Despite the segregation inherent in all aspects of life during this time, the streetcar system was a fairly democratic transportation system. The fare never exceeded five cents, and students could use a streetcar to get to school for half that price. And the system, despite its flaws, covered the industrial, business, recreational, and social needs of the vast majority of the city's residents. Following World War II, most city streetcar systems went offline in favor of bus lines. There are practical reasons for this, including the flexibility afforded bus routes that were impossible with steel track laid at great effort and expense. A long rumored conspiracy between cities, electric companies, automobile manufacturers, tire companies, and oil companies is said to have killed electric streetcar systems across the country. Recent scholarship has shown that these are more than just mere rumors. Though it would have been difficult for the private streetcar system to have kept pace with the sprawl that grew during the 1950s and 1960s. But an argument could also be made that perhaps that sprawl could have been at least partly prevented with the stout public transportation system. In October 2002, Tampa Electric Company, in partnership with Heartline, brought back electric streetcars. The route is a mere fraction of what it was during its heyday. It is even shorter than its first steam-powered line back in 1886, but it does provide another link between downtown Tampa and Ybor City. This map provides a tangible reminder of what Tampa's comprehensive transportation system looked like 80 years ago. Times have certainly changed, but cities across the country are looking to the past to solve the transportation problems of the present and the future. With the potential expansion of Tampa's current streetcar system, perhaps it can play a role in the region's transportation future. Thank you, and visit the tampabayhistorycenter.org to learn more.